The Sony FX30 is the newest camera in Sony's cinema line. It sports a 26 megapixel APS-C sensor which offers 4K at 120 frames per second in 10-bit 422. This camera is very well priced and jam-packed with specs. So in this video, we're going to be talking about setting up your FX30 right out of the box. Ah, these are pretty much rolling out everywhere in the world right now. So the FX30 obviously is part of the Cine line. You've probably seen a whole bunch of videos on my channel about the FX30 and it's here. So in the box, you pretty much get the camera, USB-C cable, little adapter, three different types of AC power and some instruction manuals. Oh, and the Z100 battery. Now pretty much straight away, what it's going to do is it's going to tell you to give you the region and time and you obviously have to do all the timing sort of things. And it also gives you the option at the start to turn on the auto temp feature to high. And if you accidentally forget to do that, we're gonna go through the settings and I'll show you exactly how to turn that one on. And I'll also do a quick pixel mapping as well, which I recommend you do pretty much, you know, before every major job. Essentially that just makes sure the sensor knows what black is true black. So you do have to put either a lens cap onto your lens or take the lens off and put the camera cap on and she's perfectly fine but let's dive directly into the settings and some things that you may want to take out of this and some things you may not want to do but this is just my recommendations on how I set up my camera right from the start. Okay, so first of all, if you didn't actually set your timing, all you need to do is set your time and location, either daylight savings on or off, obviously your date and time and the date format. So make sure you do that so you can actually identify all your footage in the right positioning. Now at the start, if you didn't set the auto power temp to high, then obviously go into the settings here. So you go into the suitcase down the bottom, number eight and across over to auto power off temp, where it says standard, select high. And obviously when Sony do bring out firmware updates, all you need to go down to is that briefcase number 12 and then over to version and you can see what version you're actually at. And obviously if the Sony do release a firmware update, then you just update it through this way. Now also if you didn't select that pixel mapping from the start, and like I said, you can do this before pretty much every major shoot, go to the briefcase option, go to number 12 and all the way down to pixel mapping. And all you need to do is just press okay, but make sure you have a lens cap on or take the lens off and put your camera cap on and it will pretty much reset the sensor so it knows what black is true black. Now the next thing that I go to is I go all the way up into that same briefcase setting and set up my menus. So number three is operation menu and video is custom dial settings. So the first one is all the rear buttons and I'll set pretty much my customized settings. So number one, I'll leave it as focus magnifier. So essentially if I do have a manual lens, all I need to do is click on that and I'll actually zoom in for me so I can actually get some critical focus. Now number two is the trash can. Now I'll actually set this one to my focus mapping. Now all you need to do is go into autofocus to manual focus, down to number four, which is focus assistant, then focus map display. Now there is a middle button and I'll actually select this one to auto record level. Now all you need to do is go into the video profile and go all the way down to number five and that will be audio record level. Now I'll go over to the top display and I'll actually keep the white balance there and I'll change the number three. Now I'll actually change the number three to select the base ISO switch. So essentially it goes from ISO 800 all the way to 2500. Now this setting is actually suited towards using Cine EI. And if you don't know what Cine EI is, there's a whole bunch of other videos you know, talking about this, or if you don't feel comfortable using Cine EI and you just wanna use S Cine Tone, perfectly fine. You can just use flexible ISO or just your regular picture profile 11, which is S Cine Tone. And all the others I'll actually leave as standard. Now also you can go into your video settings, into number one, all the way down to lens compensation. And you can actually turn breathing compensation on or you can leave it off, but it definitely does help if you are using some stills lenses and it does compensate for that breathing. Or you can actually turn just distortion compensation off or on as well. And obviously it just depends what lens is there and it can auto correct that for you. Now the next one is the biggest one. Go into the video settings and go down to number three. And this is where you can actually change the name of your file. So go to title name settings right down the bottom and you can actually change it to whatever you want. And obviously I change it to the FX30. Now I've got here the FX30 dot because I've used the FX30 before and I don't want the same names to pop up on my other files that I had from Sony. 
Now I do suggest go up to file name format and change that from standard to title. So it will come up with FX30 and then the number that's in the series. Now another one that I like to change is the audio. So go to the video setting again and number six is audio recording and going down to win noise reduction. It's generally set to auto and I actually turn that off. Just because if you are in a controlled environment, you wanna try and get the cleanest noise possible without any sort of noise reduction in the camera. And if you do wanna try and limit the wind noise, then I would suggest using a dead cat or trying to get the audio device as close to the speech bubble as possible. And if you are in a pinch, you can turn the wind noise reduction on. Now, another one that I do like to turn on is my zebra displays. So going over to the second bar, all the way down to the zebra display, which is number six and turning that on. Now at the moment, I'll keep it on at level 100 because I do like to see where my highlights are actually clipping. But generally on my monitor, I'll use false color or waveforms to try and actually get my exposure done correctly. Now the next one, I'll go over to autofocus, manual focus and all the way down to focus peaking display. And I'll change it from white to either red or blue. It really depends on what I'm going for, but generally I keep it on red. And that's pretty much it. And obviously you can see there's a nice new main menu system right at the top. And now I'll go over to the settings and throw it into photography mode, just in case I do end up taking some stills. Now I'll go down to the camera symbol and then go across to the image with number one and change JPEG to raw. But if you do like shooting in JPEG, that's perfectly fine. Or you can shoot raw plus JPEG. Now, same again, I'll actually change my file name. So the camera settings, number three and file folder settings. So go into that and you can see it's set to DSC standard and I'll change DSC and it only gives you three letters this time. So I'll actually change it to F30. And now this will give you F30 and then the number in the series. And depending on the job, that's pretty much all I do from the start and then each job will change very, very slightly. That was easy enough with the FX30, just the basic setup. Obviously you can take away some of those and see how it works for your workflow, but obviously you can change it to however you want, but that's pretty much how I have my cameras set up already. Now, in terms of the cage and stuff, I do like to have cages on there because I am a very big user of these full cam or Arca Swiss plates on majority of my tripods and I bought this. So this is for the FX3. Now the FX3 is exactly the same shape as the FX30. Now this has an Arca Swiss plate at the bottom and it gives you a HDMI clamp at the side as well and a 15 millimeter rod at the top if you do have some manual lenses. This fits literally perfectly with the FX30. And it does come with this. So this is pretty much a top NATO rail plate which puts directly straight into the FX30 if you didn't have the top handle. Now you can obviously with the FX30 buy the top handle uh, with it, which has your XLR inputs and stuff. I didn't buy it because I generally record all my audio externally, or I generally use the ECM B1M. Now with this NATO rail, you can actually buy a small rig NATO handle. So this will pretty much slot directly into this and it'll give you a nice sort of handle at the top of this. Then obviously you can have a whole bunch of other accessories which you can put a side handle on this side or a side handle on the other side so it really depends on your general workflow but that's pretty much the basics that I have with the FX30 from the start and then in another video we'll actually talk about more accessories which you may actually utilize with the FX30 but anyway guys this was a very quick video and I really hope you enjoyed it and if you do want to see any more FX30 stuff obviously comment below I'd really like to know your thoughts and questions on this thing but uh, I really hope that helped you and uh, yeah I'll see you guys in the next one all right let's get it